Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the session. Um, I hope it is going to be uh, informative to all of you guys, trying to assist you guys with uh, improving your services and doing things, obviously, in terms of the standard. So let's get right in there. Uh, we're going to look, uh, this morning, we're going to look at sanitary wear installations. And um, the topics that we're going to look at is First of all, bathtub uh, installations, basin and sink installations, uh, water closet or toilet pan and system installations. We're going to look particularly at waste traps, the anchoring of, of fixtures, and the accessibility of components. So let's uh, start right out there. First of all, the thing that we need to all take cognizance of is obviously the standards and the specifications. And in this instance, we will look more towards SANS 10400, which is the National Building Regulations and Standards, SANS 10252 Part 1 and 2, which is the water supply and drainage for buildings. And I think in this instance, even more important is the manufacturer's installations and specifications for warranties and guarantees. Um, guys, this is a very important point, um, specifically when it comes to our water closet, the toilet pans, the bath installations, those type of thing. We've had uh, fairly recently people having problems with warranty and guarantee claims due to uh, incorrect installations. So please take note of that. Right, so if we look at bathtub installations, a um, couple of things to look there and to remember is obviously the inspection or maintenance chamber. Now, uh, I've seen a couple of uh, installations where we did audits where there was no insp inst uh, sorry, inspection or maintenance chamber provided for. Now, I know in a, lot of in a lot of instances, your tiler comes afterwards and tiles are closed, or the client doesn't like it. Now, we will touch on that again uh, a bit later when it comes to accessibility, but I think it is important that you also maybe engage with your tiler your bricklayer, your plasterer, um, as well as the developer or whoever the owner or the builder of this uh, uh, structure is to make sure that there is accessibility for these components. Then we will look at uh, the traps and the overflow pipes. Um, obviously, there's a, a separate heading by itself, so we'll touch on that later. When it comes to the stability of the, of the bathtub for movement, you're talking about if you're standing next to the, the bathtub um, over here, for instance, and you push against the tub itself, make sure there's no movement there because that in itself will obviously create problems for you uh, with time to come due to the side yeah, might be cracking. And yeah, there we go with uh, a claim for warranties. The same with the bottom bedding. Now, I know. During my research, there's um, currently about three ways of providing a bedding, which will be in the old days, good old days, they used, most people used to use river sand. Then you have a river sand and cement mixture and also concrete, depending again on the manufacturer's specification. So always take cognizance of what they say and what they ask and what they recommend. The next thing is the corking or sealing around the edge of the bath for waterproofing, for splashback. Then, um, please, uh, I think a very irritating situation is taps and mixes needs to be tightened properly, specifically uh, if we look at pillar taps. I mean, I think all of us have come across a uh, basin or a bath or something where that was not tightened properly and it's quite irritating when you try and open. Then also the positioning of hot and cold water, which we will touch on later as well. So yeah, um, that, as I say, we'll, we'll touch on that later on regarding the sand scouts. So let's move on. Right, so when we look at waste traps, sand 10252 part two 
subclause 6.6.1.3 is very clear. And it says that any trap that is not integral with a sanitary fixture shall have an outlet diameter that is at least that of its inlet. That's the one. And I think more important here is to have a clearance of at least eight, meter, uh, eight millimeters at all points for traps with a nominal di diameter not exceeding 32 millimeters and 10 millimeters for traps that have a nominal diameter exceeding 32, in other words, 40 and up. So that's important to, to, to take note of that. Uh, just a couple of examples coming up where, oh yeah, uh, before I get to that, let's look at the, the water, the water trap or the water seal. Uh, we mostly work with 50 or 40 diameter pipes and you will see a uh, 75 millimeter water seal is required for 40 and 50 mil and then if we go down to a 32 maybe 40 millimeters or around 50 so this is i think the most popular ones that we are working with so take cognizance of that and you will see why i'm saying that just now you see here we've got a bar trap which was installed and look at how it's lying flat so there's no water seal there at all so this obviously is not the way to go this is better. You see it's more nice and cleaned out. It's clear. The trap is there, properly formed. Even the the overflow pipe, so everything there, there's nothing interfering. There's clearance. So that trap will do its work the way it should. Right, so let's look at a uh, basin or a zinc trap. Similar situation. This one here, you'll see this is squashed at the bottom. So that interferes again with a water trap. And while we're at the topic, let's have a look at this interlinking pipe here, which creates a bit of a backfall. So, you know, just take cognizance, make sure that we have proper flow, that we don't have interference with the traps. And this is a better installation. All right, so let's look at basin and zinc installations. Uh, important there is the anchoring of the basin or the zinc. Whether it's a wall mount or a pedestal, doesn't really matter. Make sure that your anchoring is correct. We will touch on that a bit later. Then the corking or the seal around the edge for waterproofing, again for splashback. Traps we've spoken about. The fall of interlinking waste pipes, as we've just, as we've just seen. Make sure that you have proper fall that you can empty the pipes. Overflow test, we will look at that just now. Then flexioses, uh, we will also touch on that a bit later. Angle and isolating valves. Now, although the standard does not make provision for angle and isolating valves on basins, it is maybe not a bad idea to do that. But again, we will look at that a bit later when we talk about those things. There's a specific uh, uh, thing that we need to take note of. Then again, the taps and the mixers, uh, tightening as well as the positioning of the hot and cold water. Now, if we look at the zinc zinc waste, in this instance, we have a slotted waste over here. And you will see the overflow channel is situated there. So we need to make sure that we line that slot up with that channel to create water flow as in the bottom picture here. So when there's overflow, so that that overflow can go down, go into the waste pipe, and then dissipate or else we're going to have this type of situation. So for the auditors out there, uh, we have spoken about this. Please make sure that you do uh, this test, this overflow test, to make sure that everything works correctly, and the same for the installers. Make sure that it works properly the way it should. Anchoring. We're looking at the anchoring of the basin. Uh, I've come across quite a few, especially when it's, when it's a pedestal installation uh, the installers for some other reason think they don't need to anchor the basin but guys this is very important again if this basin I mean we have come across situations where they've only applied silicone around the edge and left it like that so make sure that you do anchor the basin properly and yes just an example of something available in the market out there for you guys to do this installation and these things are available all over
Okay, let's look at the positioning of the hot and cold water taps. And the sands clear, sands code is very clear once again. Sands 10252.1, subclause 6.2.1.5 says, unless otherwise required, the hot taps shall always be situated on the left hand side, and the handle of a single control mixer shall be positioned to the left for hot water discharge. Now, there's really only one or two examples where this might change, and it's more regarding dis disabilities and maybe your old age uh, homes, that type of thing. But in general, this is the rule. So let's apply it and make sure that we comply. When we look at water closet or toilet installations, important to note the anchoring of the pan with anchor bolts, uh, well, let's let's have a look at that just now. We'll get to that. Again, corking around the base of the pan to ensure that we're not going to have uh, liquids and foreign items entering there, which will obviously create a problem later on. The anchoring of the cistern with anchor bolts or screws, very important. Pan connectors, we will have a look at as, uh, as well just now. And then also important, yeah, is to ensure that the fall from the pan to the interlinking soil pipe is correct so that you empty and your soil can actually discharge. Flexi hoses, once again, we will, have, we will have a look at that just now. And then in this instance, you will see when we get to that point, uh, isolating valve or an angle, angle valve is basically uh, a requirement for water closet installations. So if we look at the anchoring of the pans, uh, there are some very innovative ways of doing this. And I'm sure there's a reason why the manufacturer has made a little hole there. Uh, I'm sure it's not to have cement plugged in there or any of those things. Rather use something like this, which is a proper anchor bolt with a cap, which obviously gives you a nice finish as well. In this instance, the guys applied silicon stuck the pan down and that's the way it was left in this situation concrete or cement yeah you can still use the concrete but do not stop there please apply the anchoring bolt and make sure that it is secure i can tell you that uh, i know of a situation where a pan actually toppled over and broke under somebody and that guy bled himself to death before the ambulance could get to him. so again very important and obviously I know for a fact some of our people have done uh, surveys and spoken to the suppliers they will not honor a claim if you didn't anchor it properly toilet systems similar situation in this first example we've got a toilet system which is not anchored it's even pulled away from the wall so there's no anchor there and if somebody pushes on the edge of this, it might come over, fall over and it will obviously damage whatever components you have there. Again, there is a nice components available, screws and plugs and whatever to do this job this properly. If there is, however, a little bit of a space there, maybe an idea is to put something in there to, to build up that space that you don't bend or force this uh, system to the back, which might create a problem for your seals at the bottom yeah so just put a little spacer in there and then tie it down with the appropriate screw or the bolt or the whatever this is the correct way this is a proper anchored system and you will all agree no problems there now look at, let's look at pan connectors sans 10 400p states the inner surface of the connector shall be smooth and it shall not be of the concertina type or such as will allow the collection of soil within the connector. So guys, that's very clear. No concertina type or any rough surface uh, connector is allowed and that is obviously, so it's not negotiable as far as I'm concerned and I think most people will, will agree with that. Then if we look at angle and isolating valves, sans 10252, again, very clear. 
talking about isolating valves says unless otherwise required or provided that 6.1.3.2 does not apply 6.1.3.2 specifically states and we all know about this that there's no isolating valve allowed between the prv and the geezer that's what that deals with so it says a specific isolated isolating valve shall be provided on any branch pipe that serves a flushing system and next to the system so it's clear that in the case of a water closet or a toilet installation that is a requirement then if we look at uh, an isolating valve as i mentioned earlier in the case of a basin or a zinc maybe um, good idea to do that but again the regulation is clear there if you do apply an isolating valve there you must make sure and it says any isolating valve in hot water installations shall be of a full bore type in order to limit the effects of scale formation within the valve so important take note of that make sure that you install the correct Isolate, isolating valve in that instance. Flexi connectors, again the SANS code here <clears throat> tells us flexi, flexi connectors shall comply with SANS 1808, which is obviously the manufacturing standard, and shall only be used for connecting to terminal fitting, fittings that have sufficient access for maintenance. So again, clear, access for maintenance, we need to make sure that where we install this, if something goes wrong, it needs to be needs to be accessible for maintenance or repairs. Also, take note that your flexi hose install it in such a way that it's not pinching or may cause damage or be damaged in future. So we're nearly to the end here. If we look at accessibility and testing, again the SANS code is clear here. SANS 10252. Um, Annex D says all devices shall be readily, readily uh, accessible for ease of maintenance and testing. So again, coming back to the inspection chamber on the bath, I think that stands to reason that there is a reason why that needs to be there. So please, guys, make sure that you do the right thing. Inspection and testing. Before testing, the installation shall be inspected visually to detect faults in construction materials and for compliance with drawing and specifications and requirements. Again, here we go back and it refers us back to all the standards as well as the specifications from the manufacturers. Make sure, make sure, make sure. We cannot say that enough. And then obviously ensure that there's no loss of water and no visual evidence of leakage anywhere in the installation. Just something that I threw in here, which I think is important in this instance, seeing that most of our sanitary wear installations is done on new builds or even alterations or additions falls under the same uh, heading, if you want to. And uh, we often come across the situation where people say, but yeah, this is a rational design. Now, let's have a look at what a rational design says. Rational design needs to be certified in other words in writing by a competent person as described in the sans 10 400a the competent person will then accept responsibility of the installation as per the set standard a rational design can only be done in accordance with the national standards as a minimum requirement so guys Rational design, you get come often and we come across these things often and we ask, so where's the certificate? Where's this in writing? Doesn't exist. Yeah, but the engineer told us so. That is not a rational design. If it's not in writing and it's not certified, then you as the plumber will take the responsibility for that installation. So make sure, cover yourself and make sure that everything is done in terms of the standard. Again, the standard is the minimum requirement. So any rational design that you do get must be either equal or better than the standard, not poorer or weaker. Please, 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 it's important that you guys engage with your engineers, with your um, 
architects, whoever is involved here, and maybe you must get closer to them uh, to make them understand what the rational design is all about and what the responsibility is where there's uh, installations being done. Then, obviously, non-compliance. Uh, this was mentioned a couple of times in, a, in a, most of the webinars already. New build installations may not contain any non-compliance items as uh, prescribed by the national standard. So, guys, we cannot have a new installation alteration or an addition where there's new components and uh, items being installed, and then we have a non-compliance. That is not acceptable and your installation will be filed by the auditor if that is the case. So please take note of that. Then in general, um, just things to take note of. Obviously, use approved, approved products and components in terms of the SANS codes. And yes, just a couple of SANS codes uh, pertaining to specific items like the metallic water taps, the flushing systems, and acrylic uh, sanitary wear. So there's all the sense codes there, and as we know, every item has got its own code that it needs to comply to. The next thing that we need to be aware of or take cognizance of is the corrosion resistance of valves, flexi hoses, and taps. We know about the CR and DZR uh, indication there. Make sure that you install the right uh, equipment, which is not going to create problems in future. Obviously, again, the access to components for maintenance and repairs, very important. Uh, we must keep that in mind at all times. In the end, it's all about the safety of the consumer or the occupants of this property. So guys, please make sure that we abide to the rules, we abide to the standards. And again, in red here, the manufacturer's warranties and guarantees, very, very important. Make sure that we do the installations in terms of those standards. Right, so that is my story for today. Thank you very much for attending.